everybody start. I do want you to enjoy this, but the last thing to say to you is that I appreciate that uh, whatever flaws you may feel like giving, that you reserve it until the end, that uh, no flaws will be in the items. So we hope you enjoy uh, the presentation. <coughs> The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals, and creatures that move along the ground, and the birds of the air for I am grieved that I have made them. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man, and birds, and animals, and reptiles. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless and ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree, that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do those very things, but approve of those who practice them. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created night and day, and separated all the earth from the sea. And on the earth he caused plants and trees to grow. And on the earth he placed all living creatures, creatures of the sea, birds of the air, and all kinds of animals. And then God created man. Man was created in God's image, and woman created to be his helpmate. And God was pleased with his creation, and man was pleasing in God's sight. But then man sinned and turned from God. And because of that sin, a gap grew between man and God. And from that time of creation, sin has separated man from God. And, in this, and the sin in the world has grown. In the world was hatred and murder, stealing and deceit, envy and covetousness, lust and adultery. And man had turned from God, and all the men God had sent to speak to them. And the world was in the darkness of sin, so far away from God. You, therefore, have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself, because you pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, 
when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honour and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honour and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favouritism. didn't leave us this way. He loved us so much 
that he sent the light into the world to take away our sins. That light is Jesus. rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and his, by his wings we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But because God still loved a sinful world, he had a plan to save it from sin and destruction. 
and so he gave his son to bring his message of love and his plan of salvation to man. So Jesus, the light, came to shine in the darkness to draw men unto God. But men still loved their sin and turned once more their backs on God. And because of their sin, they took the Son of God. They scorned and mocked him. They took him and beat him. And on his head they placed the crown of thorns. Then they took the precious Son of God and they crucified him and left him to die on a cross at Calvary. But death hadn't triumphed. God is king of all creation and his son triumphed over death and rose victorious on the third day. The light which had come was there to stay and is here today to draw all men unto God. But will we still turn our backs on him? Children of light, 
For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Here, that was really good how we managed to get Daniel at long last. I tell you, he'll never survive a night in the lion's den. There's no hope. Yeah, the king could hardly believe it when, we, when he had to order the guards to throw Daniel in the lion's den. His best friend and most trusted servant. I've never seen him so upset. Well, it served them right. After all, if King Darius had to be so big-headed as to command everyone to worship him, he wouldn't have lost his friend. Well, who really cares? He was troubled from the very moment he arrived. Do you remember the first day he arrived when him and his friends wouldn't even eat anything from the king's table? They really were troubled. Yeah, I mean, all they would eat was fruit and vegetables and drink water for ten days, all because of some god they believed in. Well, I still don't know how they came first in all their exams. They must have been really weak from hunger. And then they come off with something about those who honour God, he will honour. Yeah, I must have had an off day or something. Ah, uh, you're right, but that really made King Nebuchadnezzar really like them. And it really got worse. Do you remember when Daniel t translated that dream the king had? Things got really bad. Yeah, and then there was that time that we tried to have this Daniel's three friends thrown into the fairy furnace for not bowing down to the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. Ah, uh, we all know what happened then. They got into the furnace unhurt. Some of our guards died, and then we had to worship their God instead of our own. See all this here about honour and God? I'm really sick of it. Look, stop thinking about the path. We've got him. There's nothing more to worry about. Come on, everyone. King Darius is about to go to the lion's den. You see what's left with Daniel? This should be fun. Have the door open. I see if perhaps my friend's life may have been spared by the God he so faithfully serves. Daniel, if you're safe, come out. He's a bit funny. Imagine thinking that Daniel would survive. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Look. Oh, King. Live forever. My God sent an angel to close the land's mouths. I am safe. God saved me because I honoured him. Well, I just do not believe this. Could Daniel's God be real? Have those men who tried to kill my friend, have them sent to the land. Oh no, please, your magic, no, we've really no, been good to you. Have mercy. No, we have tried to have the servant, the one true God killed, and now you must die. I've seen by your faithfulness that there is only one true God, and I will send out an order that all men in my land must bow down and worship your God. Truly, God is faithful and true in what he says. For those who honour him, he will honour. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his, and his word, word has, has no, no place, place in our lives. In our lives.
trouble there? Yeah, well, you see, I had to do something because I really hate him. And, you know, I don't know how he got to be one of us anyway. He's too nice. Sure, he's the chief's best mate, that's why. I bet he felt really wet when we couldn't come out of that church. Especially after the chief banned us from going to church. I well, he's going to feel even worse in the morning when a few of the other lads give him a beating. Well, that'll be good. We'll hardly recognise him after that. <laughs> Chief, thanks for the warning. I'll try and be careful tonight. Well, I tried to persuade them to leave you alone, but they just wouldn't worry, you know. I oh, don't worry, Chief. Go on and protect me. Well, I hope so, because I've done all I can do. Ah, I wonder what Danny looks like this morning. I bet you the lads did some pretty nasty damage to him. I'm sure he looks really bad. Look, here's the Chief now. Morning, new lad. Chief. Morning. Uh, listen, we were just talking there, Chief, and we were wondering about your friend Danny. How's he feeling this morning? Well, I don't know. Here, maybe he's okay. After all, he was going on a bit good for attack number or something. <laughs> That's a good one. Here he comes now, Danny. You're okay? Of course I'm okay, Chief. I told you, the Lord will protect me. Then your God does exist. That's great. Hey, you see, if you don't get out of here now, I'm going to give you the beating I should have got. <laughs> Thank everybody for coming tonight. And if somebody would put the lights on in the hall, please. Um, I'd also like to thank people in the, the city who put in a lot of work. And um, people who did the lights and the sound and the music and who wrote the sketches really put in a lot of work. In it, and I'd just like to say thank you to them. And um, we're going to finish. There should be hymn books sitting about near where you're sitting. We're going to finish off singing um, some carols. Starting off with number 50. So number
number 50. sing hymn number 42.
know the tune better of it. Um, number 49, and after this Mr Boyce will close in prayer.
But God didn't leave us this way. He loved us so much that he sent the light into the world to take away our sins. That light is Jesus.